Hi, I'm Wade from Confluent. In this video, we'll be discussing how to implement time windows in Flink and their relationship to watermarks. Infinite streams of data present us with challenges. For example, calculating the sum of an infinite stream is impossible. Instead, we need to create boundaries in the stream to provide something meaningful. Fitness trackers record biometrics, like steps and heart rate. They produce an infinite stream of data. However, we still want to aggregate the data into sums and averages. To accommodate aggregation, we break the metrics into time windows, such as how many steps were taken today or in the last hour. These computations separate the infinite stream into measurable time periods. The Data Stream API implements time windows through the use of two operators. The window all operator is available on a non-keyed stream. This is a stream where you haven't used the key by operator. It takes a time window as a parameter, which we'll discuss in more detail in a moment. Now, if we have a keyed stream, then we use the window operator instead. An important consideration is that the window all operator is run by a single task without parallelism. However, key by partitions the stream, which allows the window operation to be run in parallel. So how do we define the time window parameter? Let's keep using our fitness tracker as an example. Trackers usually provide the ability to look back in time. You can see your metrics for the previous day, month, or even longer. These are discrete time intervals with a known start and end point, and there is no overlap. Metrics from today will not share any data points with metrics from yesterday. In Flink, this is known as a tumbling time window. Here, we see a tumbling event time window of five seconds. This means that the stream will be broken into discrete five-second chunks. Optionally, the keyed windows can be staggered. This can be useful to ensure that multiple windows are not firing at the exact same time. But what if we wanted to know how many steps we took in the last 24 hours? This type of window doesn't have a fixed start and end point. Instead, it slides as the current time changes. Furthermore, the windows overlap. If I check the last 24 hours and then check it again an hour later, the data sets will share 23 hours worth of data. In Flink, this is known as a sliding time window. To implement a sliding time window, we need to provide the size of the window and the size of the slide. Here we see a window that is 10 seconds long with a slide of 5 seconds. In other words, every 5 seconds, this data stream will report the past 10 seconds worth of data. Some fitness trackers use metrics along with machine learning to automatically detect certain types of exercise. They do this by separating periods of activity from inactivity. However, in this case, there's no fixed time window. Sometimes you might be active for five minutes, while other times you might be active for an hour. In Flink, this is called a session time window. These windows are based on the active periods. In other words, when we see an event, we open a new window. We terminate the window when we see a gap in the events. In this case, if we don't see any events for 10 minutes, we would end the window. Now that we have a basic understanding of windowing, it opens up some new operators for us. One of the key ones is a window join. It allows us to take two data streams and join them by a key and a time window. Once the streams have been joined, we can use the apply operator. It takes matching elements from each stream and applies a function to return an output type. You can think of this as a database join, but rather than operating on a table, it operates on a data stream. To determine what data goes into the window, Flink uses watermarks. You can think of them as timestamps that are added into the data stream at certain points. Watermarks flow through the stream and are consumed by each of the operators. They are then forwarded downstream. The purpose of a watermark is to guarantee that the stream is up to date. It indicates there will be no more events with an earlier timestamp. Watermarks are defined using a watermark strategy. There are a few predefined strategies, but you can also create your own. The most basic strategy is no watermarks. It's useful if you don't care about timestamps, but it's unsuitable for windowing. For windowing, our simplest strategy is monotonous timestamps. This tells Flink that the timestamps will be strictly increasing and never out of order. This can be suitable for messages produced by a single-threaded process. However, 
highly scalable systems often use multiple threads and multiple machines. In this case, the data stream may be partly out of order. The bounded out of orderness strategy tells Flink the stream is out of order within a certain time constraint. But be careful, bounded out of orderness introduces latency while the stream waits for the period to elapse. If your system is sensitive to latency, you'll want to keep this value low. If a window encounters a late message after a watermark, the normal behavior is to drop them. You can set up alternate behaviors, such as pushing those late messages to a second data stream. By default, Flink will look at the timestamp embedded in each message to generate watermarks. However, those timestamps are sometimes unsuitable and often missing. We can use the timestamp assigner to customize how Flink calculates the timestamp. It takes a function, including the event and the assigned timestamp, and returns a different timestamp. Sometimes you will consume from a source with a tendency to be idle. Unfortunately, idle sources don't generate new watermarks. This can block the watermark computation for the entire pipeline and cause it to stall. You can mitigate this using an idleness period. It provides a time period after which a source will be marked as idle. Idle sources are removed from the watermark computation, allowing the stream to progress. Dealing with watermarks can be tricky. If you find yourself with a stream that isn't producing results, watermarks are usually to blame. Check out our Flink 101 course for a deeper discussion on watermarks, including how to debug them. In the meantime, let's try putting them to use in an exercise. If you aren't already on Confluent Developer, head there now using the link in the video description to access the rest of this course and its hands-on exercises. Mm -hmm.